Hi everyone, my name is Luis Polo and I'm a software engineer at Netflix. I'm also currently the SIG lead for the Spinnaker as Code SIG and I just wanted to give you a quick update about uh, what happened in the SIG in 2020 and what our plans are for uh, 2021. So let's take a quick look. Uh, the main highlights of 2020 were first that we really had a focus shift to manage delivery while in the past we had spent some time investigating and uh, improving managed pipeline templates uh, Netflix is really heavily invested at the moment uh, into making managed delivery the primary path forward for managed delivery solutions and uh, delivery as code and so we spent the majority of 2020 focused on managed delivery in the SIG as well there's a bunch of really cool and new features that were added into managed delivery throughout the year. Also, lots of uh, robustness improvements and usability improvements. And I'll cover some of them uh, in the, the upcoming slides, but they're also listed on this one right here for reference. The second thing that happened this year that was really, really interesting was uh, this collaboration between AWS and Netflix on this uh, managed delivery plugin for Kubernetes deployments. And we actually had a talk this year as well at the Spinnaker Summit on this topic. So I encourage you to check it out. Uh, it's called Managed Delivery for Kubernetes, a collaboration story. So if you head on over to the main Spinnaker Summit website, I'm sure you'll find it there. So let's take a look at the current state of managed delivery. Here's the brand new environments view. Here you can get an overview of all of your environments and artifact versions at a glance. You can drill down into a specific artifact version by clicking on it. When you do, you can see exactly the state that version was in in the various environments. For example, here you can see Keel itself managed by managed delivery. Yep, we eat dog food. And that the latest version that's at the top there is currently deployed in all three of our environments, test, pre-staging, and main. We also have integration with the source control system, so you can see details about the commit associated with artifacts on the top right-hand corner there. This is a first for Spinnaker and it gives you great visibility. We're really excited about this. Next, I wanted to show you how a manual promotion artifact flow looks like. As you can see in the UI, here I specified a manual judgment constraint on the staging environment, so the artifact will not be deployed there until I approve. I can do that from the UI, as you can see here, by clicking that button. But a, but a much cooler way of doing this is using Slack. Here you can get a Slack notification that has interactive buttons to approve or reject the artifact promotion. If you're constantly on Slack like we are, especially now with COVID and lockdowns, this makes your life so much easier. Our users love this feature. Next up is spinning. As the name indicates, spinning allows you to pin a specific version of an artifact to an environment, bypassing any promotion constraints. This is another feature that our users love because it allows you to easily roll back in case of a problem or expedite a deployment if you're in the rush to get a hotfix out. Let's say you're in the middle of, a, of an incident and you can't wait for the artifact to go through the usual promotion flow from tests to staging and then prod. You just need to get it out. This is how you do it. When you click that pin button, Spinnaker will immediately start deploying that version in that environment. If you're familiar with the current experience of rolling things back in Spinnaker, you will understand how much better this experience is in terms of the ease of use and the visibility you get about what's going on. It's just great. And here you see the version deployed and the pin icon over the artifact version and environment on the left-hand side, which makes it easy to spot. The last feature I wanted to show you is what we call marking a version as bad. This allows you to make sure that a version will never ever be deployed in that environment again, not even by accident. So back to our fictitious example of the incident scenario, imagine that you found a really bad bug in a version that's currently in production, and then you're going to pin a different one to fix the problem. Well, you want to make sure that even if you roll back in the future, you never end up deploying that bad version by accident. So this is how you do it. Once you mark it as bad, this is what the UI looks like. OK, so what are some of our plans for 2021? Uh, and Netflix, we're really planning on continuing to invest heavily on managed delivery. And here are a couple of the things that we are planning to work on uh, in the next year. We want to improve visibility of baking of AMIs because uh, Netflix still uses a lot of EC2 instances. And so uh, the experience around AMIs uh, is important to us. 
We want to improve the notifications that we send out to help you understand the progress of your code through the delivery flow, especially via Slack, but also by integrating with uh, the source control system, for example. We want to improve the visibility into the code changes that are associated with uh, your deployments. So we're currently working on this feature at Netflix, and it will allow you to uh, basically see a diff of the source code that changed between one deployment and another. And that's a really, really cool and helpful feature for developers. Um, then we want to also include support for uh, validation tests that run after your deployments. And this has probably been the number one feature request we've had at Netflix teams throughout the year as teams were onboarding. And finally, we are gearing up to experiment with uh, various different things some of which are around the app bootstrapping process. In other words, how to make sure that managed delivery is available uh, when you first bootstrap your app and that that process is easy. And then uh, raising the level of abstraction for application developers is a major area of focus for us as well. We want to be able to uh, allow developers to specify their delivery requirements and their infrastructure at a very high level because frankly, most of them don't uh, care about the nitty-gritty details or they're not experts actually on selecting those details so we want to allow central teams who are specialized in things like selecting the best instance types for certain workflows for instance to make those choices on the behalf of the developers and let developers focus on their code and here are some of the things that the aws folks who've joined the sig are planning to work on this next year as well they are planning to continue to work on Kubernetes support for managed delivery, which is great. Um, one of the obvious candidates there is including UI support for visualizing Kubernetes resources, which is not something that we currently have. Uh, validating of Kubernetes resources as they progress through the environment since the UI is another feature they're planning to work on. The uh, ability to visualize code changes related to your Docker artifact deployments is also something that they're planning to work on. And then finally, kind of related to this idea of raising the level of abstraction and uh, facilitating the bootstrapping of apps that I was talking about earlier, they're planning on working on templating tools as well. All right, I hope you're excited about these uh, upcoming developments for managed delivery. And if you have any other topics, uh, you're always more than welcome to join us. Uh, we, our Spinnaker Slack channel is SIG Spinnaker as Code. Um, our agenda and calendar are published on the GitHub page for the SIG, which is uh, linked on the slides there. So please come join us and have a chat. We'll see you next year.